Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're taking a look at the system requirements needed to run Final Cut Pro X, and also our recommendations for the specs needed to have a good editing experience. Basically, when people talk about system requirements, they're probably talking about one of two things. They're either talking about the absolute minimum you need in order to get Final Cut Pro X to actually launch, or they could be talking about the general computer that you should be looking for if what you want is a good fluid editing experience. With things like not lagging a lot, having good snappy responsiveness, and not waiting hours and hours for a simple export. Now here's the thing, because Final Cut is an Apple product and only works on a Mac, there's a pretty limited selection of what you can buy, and your only real options are what's current unless you're willing to go on Craigslist or try to buy something second hand. Now I should really say that you have limited flexibility unless you're looking to get a Mac Pro, which gives you a lot of options, but let's just start with the easy stuff, the base system requirements that you'll need to actually make Final Cut Pro run at all. And Apple's pretty specific about what you're actually going to need to run this. You'll need your operating system to be at least OS X 10.14.6 or later, and hold on a sec. I was editing Final Cut Pro X all the way back in 2013, and I only had OS X 10.9. So... LIAR! So it seems like Apple is saying this is more of a list of minimum system requirements that they'll actually say they support. Okay, so up-to-date operating system, but the rest of these will actually be very important when actually looking to run Final Cut. Minimum four gigabytes of RAM or computer memory, one gigabyte of VRAM, which is talking about your graphics card. That one you can get away with a little bit less, but what you can't get away with is less than 3.8 gigabytes of disk storage space. Final Cut will literally tell you you can't do anything else if you try to use it with less than this amount on your computer. So all in all, pretty simple requirements to hit. A really easy way to think about it is that you're probably Probably not going to have to worry about Final Cut Pro running at all if you're using a computer from 2012 or later. Basically, if you have a Mac that's newer than when Final Cut Pro X was actually released. Maybe a good point of reference is the computer that I actually use to run Final Cut. It's a 2013 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's got four cores at 2.4 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of memory, a graphics card with one gigabyte of VRAM, and storage space totaling almost 250 gigabytes. And I would rate my experience editing with this computer as Okay, sort of. It does the job, but if I'm being honest, it's frustrating enough that if I'm getting paid for editing, it's time to upgrade. Okay, so now that you know what you need for your computer not to smash itself in the face trying to open up Final Cut, what do you need for your computer to actually have a good experience editing? Now, sadly, it seems like the more money you spend, the better experience you'll get inside of Final Cut. Now, you might experience a drop off in terms of the rate of return for each dollar spent, but if you want the best experience, you gotta spend the most money. But that doesn't mean you should. So to dive into it, let's take a look at the four components that you should be looking at when looking for an editing computer. The CPU, the GPU, the RAM or memory, and the hard drive for storage space. All of these are important, but let's start with the CPU. This is essentially the brain of your computer, and when it comes to video editing, and Final Cut specifically, this is going to make the biggest impact on your experience. Each individual action that's taken along your editing journey will at some point in time need to go through the CPU. So making sure that it's able to handle whatever's thrown at it will make sure that you're not ready to throw your computer across the room. When you're talking about the CPU, you're essentially looking for two things, the number of cores and the clock speed. The more cores, the better. The faster the clock speed, the better. So it's pretty easy to tell that the MacBook Air with two cores at 1.1 gigahertz will perform poorer than the best Mac Pro option with up to 28 cores. Wow. Okay, you get the point. There's an incredibly wide range of experiences that you could have, but what it comes down to is price versus performance. Now, the editing experience that you'll probably have on that MacBook Air is gross. But to be honest, I'd probably take that rather than having a great experience on something that I literally need to take out a mortgage for. The bottom line is that if you're doing any sort of real work inside of Final Cut, we'd recommend no fewer than four cores on your CPU, otherwise known as a quad core system. But realistically, we'd actually recommend six to eight cores as the sweet spot to get that better experience. Next up is the GPU. This is really what's responsible for you being able to visually see this video on your computer screen. The GPU is what actually drives each individual pixel to your display. It's also responsible for a lot of the video based calculations that take place inside of your computer. So I'm pretty sure you can see why it's important for video editing. 
Apple recommends that if you're working with 4K footage, that you have a minimum of one gigabyte of VRAM for your graphics card. So does having more than that equal a faster, better experience inside of Final Cut? Maybe. It's kind of hard to tell because unlike the CPU, which every single decision is going to need to pass through eventually, the GPU is a lot more case dependent. It's going to be working a lot harder in some cases, just depending on what you're doing. Some applications like 3D rendering are going to push it very hard, whereas others like basic timeline scrubbing aren't going to be asking as much of it. But where you can actually measure it making a difference is with things like rendering, exporting and processing of effects and things like color grades, for example. And while this is certainly an important piece of the puzzle, it's probably the one that seems like you have the least control over when deciding which Mac computer is best for you. Realistically, this is gonna be one of those decisions that's actually made for you just based off of knowing a couple other parameters. Next up is RAM, which stands for Random Access Memory. This is basically the extent to which your computer can multitask. If you've ever been editing and then switched over to open up a bunch of Chrome tabs and notice that your computer basically just wants to give up on life, it's probably because you're out of memory and your computer has to start making decisions about what's most important while leaving other things waiting until it can get back to them. Long story short, the more memory, the better, and the less chance that you'll see that spinning wheel of death. But everything in moderation and what's within your budget. You could go overboard with this if you're building the Mac Pro, for example, and you want to get up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM? But if you're a normal person with a reasonable budget, we'd recommend not going any lower than eight gigabytes of RAM. But really, 16 to 32 gigabytes is really the sweet spot to get that better editing experience if this is something that you're actually serious about. And finally, we have the storage. You might be thinking, why is the hard drive on the same list as all these other important components? Is it really that integral to my editing experience? Yes, yes it is. If you're working with an old Mac computer, you're probably gonna wanna check to see if it has a traditional spinning hard drive or an SSD, which stands for solid state drive. SSDs are way faster, not to mention safer, because they don't have the same moving spinning parts that can go kaput if you drop your computer while it's running. But unless your Mac is from 2012 or earlier, it's pretty safe to say you've got an SSD in your system. So with that out of the way, basically the question you wanna ask is, do you have enough space on your computer to hold your project files, all your footage, and everything else that you wanna have on your computer, and extra space? We already mentioned that at 3.8 gigabytes of storage space, Final Cut's gonna be like, hey, I can't do anything make some space for me. But even before you get to that breaking point, your computer is gonna work better by having more buffer space to work with. Having little to no storage space basically means that you're telling Final Cut to do all of its work, like rendering preview files inside a tiny amount of storage space, meaning it's got like no room to work. But having more storage space is literally almost like giving your computer more breathing room. Think about whether you'd prefer to work in a tiny cramped cubicle or an open luxurious office space. It's going to impact your work. But maybe most importantly, the more storage space you have on that fast internal SSD means the less you'll have to rely on external spinning hard drives to edit your footage off of, which will absolutely slow down your editing process. So either make sure that you have a really, really fast external hard drive that you can work off of effectively, or make sure that you have more than enough internal disk space to be able to hold your footage, project files, and anything else that you plan to be working with. If you just want numbers, 250 gigabytes is too small for me personally. I would opt for either 512 gigabytes or even one terabyte of storage space. So now that that's all out of the way, what do we recommend for you? Well, like most people, we'd recommend the MacBook Pro lineup for a number of reasons, but most of it comes down to the fact that the price isn't enough to break the bank for most people looking for a Final Cut computer, and it fully satisfies all of our requirements for a good editing experience, and even the lowest base model is powerful enough to handle a good amount of editing work. We'd recommend staying away from the MacBook Air lineup. They're actually fully capable of running Final Cut, and some people choose to do that. But if you're doing anything more than just editing a couple 1080p clips and doing some basic cutting, you're gonna start to notice it breaking down, especially once you start adding some heavier effects. And if you're looking for a bit more of a permanent desktop machine, we'd recommend staying away from the iMac and instead go for the iMac Pro or Mac Pro instead. The reason is because the iMac really doesn't have anything special to offer that the MacBook Pro doesn't already do for about the same price point, plus with the added benefit of being able to pick it up and take it with you wherever you go. 
And if you're actually looking to invest more in a Mac Pro, we're hoping that going over each of those individual components in detail will help you to make a better decision when having those additional options. So at the end of the day, the MacBook Pro lineup is what we'd recommend, but if we're talking about what I would actually go for personally, I'd be looking at the MacBook Pro 16 inch options. Either of these two choices will serve you well, but the higher range eight core i9 processor, along with double the amount of storage space, is enough to wanna to draw me in to upgrade my old 2013 era MacBook Pro. But guys, as always, we really hope that you liked this video. And if you did, and you think that we could help you out some more, feel free to check out all of our Final Cut Pro X templates to help you make an awesome video in a fraction of the time. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.